Last week, I got an email from one of my clients who was having trouble with their about page. You see, someone, we, we won't say who, had built this page so that all the images flip-flop from left to right. Now to do this, they just statically put in these order values so that the image would be on the left and then on the right. But as new team members got added or as they moved around the order of the team members, everything got out of whack and it wasn't immediately clear how to fix this ordering issue. So of course I wanted to rebuild this in a way that it was a little bit easier for my client to manage. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build out this layout that it will automatically rearrange the content in the image in the proper position, no matter if you add new team members, remove people away, or change the order of things. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So let's build out this entire thing from scratch to make it a little bit more easy to maintain over the long run. So with our list view open here, we're just gonna start by adding a container to the page, which is gonna be our section. I'll make sure to go into the settings here and change this tag name to section. And inside of it, we're gonna want an inner container. I'll go back to our section here and add a little bit of padding just so this isn't crammed up against the others. We'll go with maybe 80 pixels top and bottom and 24 pixels left and right. Now this container here, which is gonna be our wrapper, we'll go ahead and rename that to wrapper just so we can keep an eye on everything, it's gonna hold each one of what we're gonna call our team cards. So let's go ahead and add a container here and we'll call this team card. Now inside the team card, we're gonna have two columns, one on the left with all the content and one on the right with the image. So we'll go ahead and add a container here. We'll rename this, this is gonna be content and we'll go ahead and duplicate this and the one that's gonna eventually be over here on the right is gonna be our photo. Now I'll go ahead and pause the video and put the content into this first one. Now all I've done here is add the H2 for the person's name, I've added some fake text for their biography, and inside the photo wrapper, I've included an image here. Now let's go back and give everything classes. Here for our team card, I'm just gonna call this team hyphen card. In the container that wraps all of our content, we'll call this team hyphen card, double underscore content. Here under the photo, we'll do team hyphen card, double underscore photo. And then going back to the wrapper that's holding all this, we'll call this team cards and hit create. Now each one of these containers inside of here has their own class, which is gonna be really important as we go to manipulate all this. But let's go ahead and just get our first one set up here. So for our team card, we'll go and make sure we're editing inside this class. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use CSS grid for this. So we'll change this to display grid. Now under grid layout, I'm gonna change this to a two column layout. And now you can see my content is on the left, the image is on the right. We need a little bit of space in between these, so I'll go back into my alignment, and in the column gap, I'll add maybe 60 pixels of gap in between these two things. Now, I do want these to not be top aligned. I want this text to be in the center here, so under Align Items, I'm gonna click Align Center. This is perfect for our first card, so I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it here and fill in the information for our next team member. So now we have all of Angela's information in place, but we can see we need to add some space in between these two team members. So I'm gonna go back to our wrapper that's holding all of these. We'll go into that team cards class. And I think to create that space, I'm also just gonna use CSS grid here. So we'll change this to display grid. We'll make sure that it's just a one column layout because this entire card needs to wrap the entire space here. But we'll go in here into alignment and under row gap, we'll add maybe 80 pixels of row gap, which is just gonna spread these cards out a little. Now, all I need to do is continue to duplicate each one of these cards so I can add all of our team members. So I'll go ahead and do that quickly. Now, through the magic of editing, we have all five of our team members here, which is a great start. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and collapse some of these things so we can see exactly what we're working with here. Before we get too crazy flip-flopping some of these things, we need to think about how this is gonna work responsively as well. Here on desktop, I'm gonna wanna go from the image on the right to the left, to the right to the left. But as we go down to our smaller device sizes, like here on tablet, I think I just want these to stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up first. We'll go in here to our team card. We'll make sure it's still set to display grid. And we're gonna change this grid layout to just a single column layout. This will put the text or the content full width here and the image full width as well. Now, I think I want their image to come before their name. So we'll go in here under the team card into the photo here, make sure we've selected that class. 
And under our alignment, we're gonna change this order to negative one. Now this is only affecting the tablet and mobile versions, but this is gonna make sure that the image comes before the content. If we go back here to our desktop, we can still see the contents on the left and the images on the right. We've only affected those smaller device sizes. Now the problem I had originally is I just went in here and statically moved these around. You could of course just grab this first photo and then move it in the order, but this changes the order of the DOM and I at least didn't wanna do that. I wanted to make sure that all the text came first in the DOM order. So instead I just went in here under layout and alignment and down here to the order I did negative one. Now this flipped it for Jim, but all the rest were left the same. So then I had to of course go down here to the third one Again, under display, alignment, change this order to negative one. Again, here to the last one, we'll go into the photo, layout, negative one. Now this gives us the desired effect. And since we only did this on the desktop here, we can see on mobile, this is still working exactly the way we want it. However, the problem comes when we decide we wanna add a new team member. If I just go to this last card and duplicate it, you can see the image is on the left, the text is on the right. Now I'm never gonna expect my client to know to go in here to the team card, to the photo, to the layout, and change this order value back to blank just to move it back to the right. Plus, it's just a pain in the butt if you ever want to rearrange these. Let's say Angela gets a promotion, we move her up, and now all of these are totally out of sync and we'd have to go manually change all of these one by one. So I've undone all those changes and let's talk about a little bit better approach to doing this. Now we're gonna be using some advanced selectors, but don't worry if you haven't used some of these advanced selectors before, we're gonna take it one step at a time. So hopefully you understand how we're building all this out. The first thing we need to remember is that we only want to affect the desktop version of this. The tablet and mobile versions already stack the way we want to. So we need to make sure we're using our media queries here to only select the desktop. Now here by default, this one selects the desktop, tablet, and mobile. This one's tablet and mobile. This one's just mobile. But if we click on this little settings button here, we can actually select desktop, which gives us this icon here. Now we're only affecting things at the desktop breakpoint, so we won't mess with anything on our tablet or mobile versions, which already look good as is. What we wanna be able to do with this approach is just select every other one of the team cards. So we wanna select Jim, but not select Angela. We wanna select Denise, but not select Devin, and we wanna select Gemma. Now, we're not worried about selecting those people specifically. We wanna select their place in line. We wanna select the first, the third, and the fifth. So what I mean here is we wanna select every odd number element. And this is actually pretty easy to do with CSS. So let's go back up here to our team card. That's actually what we're gonna be wanting to select first is just this entire wrapper. So I'm gonna make sure we're here inside of our team card class. And again, we gotta make sure that we're here inside of our desktop view. So we have our team card and only at the desktop breakpoint. To select the odd items, we're gonna go here under this more under manage selectors and click add new. Inside this selector, we're gonna type and, which is just gonna represent this team card class. We're gonna do colon, nth of type and inside parentheses, we're gonna type in odd and then close our parentheses. Now, if we've created this selector properly, if I go in here and add a border to this element, we're gonna see only our first, third and fifth items get borders. So we'll go in here to our border and we'll just do a five pixel border. You can see our first team card here, Jim got the border, Angela did not, Denise did, Devin did not, and Gemma did. So now we've properly selected the nth of type odd, which is one, three, and five in this case. However, we don't really wanna select this entire card. What we're wanting to select is the photo inside of this card. So instead of doing nth of type odd, let's go back in here under more. Here's the selector that we created. We're gonna click on these options and click edit selector. Here we have team card, which is just represented by this and symbol nth of type odd. And what we wanna select inside of that is actually the wrapper around our photo, which if we remember was team hyphen card double underscore photo. So now if we hit update, we can see this black border that we've added to the selector is only on the first image, the third image, and the fifth image, which is perfect. But of course we don't want a border on these, so let's go ahead and wipe out that border. What we wanna do is change the order of these elements. So we'll go back into layout, 
under display, we're gonna change the order to negative one, which is just gonna move it to be the first item inside that layout. So because we're selecting the team card double underscore photo, but only the ones that are the nth of type odd, now we've moved the first photo, the third photo, and the fifth photo over to the left-hand side. Now what's great about this is now if we go to this last card, which was Gemma, and we duplicate it, I'll go in here and hit duplicate, you can see it's automatically moved this image over to the right because it's not an odd number inside of the stack, it's an even number. And of course, if Angela got her promotion, we'll go back to Angela's card here and move her up. You can see her image was automatically moved over to the left since she's an odd number. Of course, because we did all of this inside of our media query, if we go back down to our tablet version, we can see this has not been affected. The image still comes before the text on each one of these, which is exactly what we wanted. Taking this approach with my client's site is gonna mean it's a whole lot easier for them to update this in the future. Whether they need to add, remove, or rearrange any of their team members, the order of all this is gonna be done automatically for them. Now it can be kind of embarrassing to go back to old projects and see how you used to do things, but that's just web development. If you're not a little embarrassed by the old projects you've done, then you've probably not made enough progress. By picking up little tips and tricks like this, you can always go back and refactor things that are still under active use, and this is gonna make my client's life a whole lot easier, so it's totally worth it. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.